Welcome, this is Art for All People, and we're doing our interview series, and we're here with Mary Wright at the Wright Foundation here in Malibu. It's just an amazing place. Welcome, Mary. How are you? Oh, welcome. Thank you. It's yeah. such a beautiful, beautiful space. So, um, we just want to get to know you. You're one of the pioneers in arts and healing, so we really want to, you know, just kind of have a conversation and hear your wisdom. <laughs> And just connect and, and let the world, you know, hear about your creative process and things like that. Um, do you have anything to add to that? Well, we're delighted to be here in this space uh, with a wisdom carrier, Mary. And uh, I think we're a lot curious about how your um, uh, personal journey uh, kind of, you know, uh, seeded and started. Uh, and it, it, you know, uh, with the community and with the artists and all this gathering on this land, and uh, we feel like you're uh, you are really related to the land, to this land, uh, like you are one with the land. So maybe we begin with this land and then uh, hear how uh, this is home for you. That's how it feels. Thank you, that's very insightful mm -hmm. because I feel very soul connected and I've always been inspired and close to wilderness and I never thought I would have the joy of this much undeveloped nature around me mm. to live and I am so grateful for that. Yeah, Eric's father bought this land in the mid-50s for almost nothing. Nobody lived in the Santa Monica Mountains. <laughs> and uh, That was Frank Lloyd Wright? It's actually oh, the, yeah. Lloyd Wright, okay. was, uh, Eric's father. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very sacred land to the Chumash mm -hmm. peoples, it turns out. We didn't know that. But it feels like a, a responsibility and a, a great gratitude to be able to share it in good ways and have people come, which they do for solstice and equinox mm -hmm. four times a year. Large groups of people come to the medicine wheel that Vijay created in '87. And Native peoples, or those deeply trained by Native peoples, um, guide us in a, in a connective ceremony to the four directions to, to life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were there. So powerful. Potent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could feel it. So how did, um, so you were here on the land, where did the vision come to have like gatherings? Did you and Eric sit down or what was Well, that? it had been... The seed had been planted long ago, but it wasn't until around 2000 that we formed it and made it into a nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. which, with the intention of which was to activate and educate mm -hmm. people to connect to nature and be responsible. Mm -hmm. for us all to be responsible for environmental and social issues. Mm -hmm. And that we were inspired for many years to include inner city youth. Mm -hmm. And we haven't just lately been able to pull that together, but we want to again mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. It's so incredible to have them come for the first time, mm -hmm. many of them, have been off the pavement of the inner city. Yeah. Wow. And we always had them camp overnight. We had counselor people. Mm -hmm. And they would say things like, I've never seen the stars before. Mm -hmm. oh. What and up? It's so quiet. It's so there's no sirens or, <sighs> or gunshots or anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really spooky. Mm -hmm. And anyway, they, and then do, we do art experiences with them. Mm -hmm. I just love, we all loved it, and I hope that it will 
that will initiate okay, back that's again. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so you did it first with Vijay Hamilton. One, was that one of the first um, uh, ceremonies or rituals? No. Um, oh, okay. Oh, you mean when Vijay? Yes, yeah. indeed. Yeah. When Vijay came, which was the mid eighties. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Um, indeed, that was the first big mm -hmm. community gatherings, mm -hmm. was usually creating the, Addison, yeah. the wheel and doing the harmonic convergence. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that was... That's um, what's been magical. 650 <laughs> people, mm -hmm. and it was incredibly magical, mm -hmm. as usually. <laughs> Not help but do. It was such an inspiration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We begin with the communal, which is this land. It feels like it's welcoming everyone. Uh, in you know, some kind of a calling. I feel like that's coming through the land. But you, as a pers uh, personal journey, you're an amazing artist, and uh, it feels like your work is also very much inspired from not this land, but from nature uh, and your watercolors. Can you talk a little bit how that, you know, how that process happens, how the inspiration comes and, you know, how you create? Well, my work blooms out of many roots. One of them is teaching art in Japan mm -hmm. in the late 50s, mm -hmm. two years, and learning Japanese sumie painting, and it's such an expressive, expressive medium. And I loved learning about Japan and being, and their deep culture and connection to nature. Of course, originally coming from China, but it's ancient and very inspiring to me. So that was one of the threads, one of the, the roots of my work. Mm -hmm. And How did you get to Japan in the 50s? Well, in the 50s, I, I had uh, graduated from college. And <laughs> I wanted to see the world. Mm -hmm. And of course, when I heard that if you signed on with the American Air Force, you could go over to Tokyo and be an art teacher. Mm -hmm. They needed an art teacher in the school. Mm -hmm. So I said, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was an incredible opportunity. Can you imagine a world where if we went out of Tokyo into the country, which we did every countryside every weekend, mm -hmm. people in the fields would drop their hoe. They had not ever seen an image of a Western woman. <laughs> Yeah, I had that experience in China. <laughs> in China. In, in Kathmandu, they dropped their yogurt bowls. In 58, they'd never seen an image of a wow. Western woman. And it's an international city now. It has been for a long time. But, mm -hmm. but that... Um, Back into time. The inspiration was enormous coming from mm -hmm. the East. Wonderful. And then um, I read somewhere you were in Korea, is that right? Or Well, we, in the summer, of course, when it's 120 degrees, it's the only time we had off, we would travel to India and China and nice. Thailand and ah. Kathmandu. Mm -hmm. and nice journey. You could go. <laughs> but uh, indelible, wonderful experiences. Mm -hmm. Not easy in that heat for me. Mm -hmm. but, And this was before Eric? Yes, this is before Eric. I, one of the bonds that we had when we met was that he had been a conscientious objector oh. in the Korean War. He didn't want to go to jail, but so they said, okay, you can go over to Korea and work in the, in the medical lab. So he was on his R&R, &R, they would send them to Japan. So we both had just come when we met. We met here, having both come from Japan and in love with Japan. Mm -hmm. So wonderful. Let's go back to your art. Um, what does art mean to you? And just if, if you could say it in one word, or oh, I wish I could, but I think if I, it would be good to. Maybe 
two words. Open mm -hmm. and connect. Uh, open and connect. Beautiful. Beautiful. Those are the two words. <laughs> have been uh, posing this question to, uh, it, along our journey. It's just part of the inquiry. Like we want to know what art means to as many people yeah. as possible. But for me, when it, you say open and connect, that's what nature is, right? It is for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Opening to nature. deeper self mm -hmm. is met mm. and that's been so supported by my experience with art in Japan mm -hmm. also Native American wisdom teachings mm -hmm. have been very mm -hmm. deep source and they're very overlapping of course mm -hmm. um, with Asian spiritual thought. Um, and so the fact that Eric's tradition in his family was organic architecture mm. that all felt very connected. It was a good match. <laughs> <laughs> And a structure, you know, to be held within. It's almost yes. like yes. we all that we all need. Yeah. How, but like educating, I, I I believe you have been teaching like all along the way. Mm -hmm. How does that organically, you know, you have been doing your own art and then you have been teaching people. Yeah. Um, For thirty years, I mm -hmm. taught all ages, but mostly junior high school, mm -hmm. and. There's something about that 12 and 13, it's an like opening time. And it felt very right somehow to be there to encourage and guide them. And you mainly teach in watercolors, or? Well, when I was in junior high, you taught everything. Mm -hmm. Every material, every, mm -hmm. you know, was very broad. Mm -hmm. Watercolor is my personal personal favorite, medium favorite. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what type of teacher were you? What? How would you describe yourself? Or, or how would say a student was talking about you? How would they describe you as a teacher? Explore, explore, and mm. find new things. Mm. No, I never thought of that. Mm. I'm always inspired and want to inspire others with the new. That's why I, there's something about watercolor where you can just put, it's not always taught this way, but mm -hmm. the way I like to teach it is you let the happening Happen. <laughs> inspire the next thing, rather than you've got to do this, then you do this, mm -hmm. and then this is so that it becomes the leader. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the, so it seems like transformation is key in the creative process for you. Absolutely. Thank you for that word. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of witness it along the way, the process of, you know, what's happening within. Thank you. That's exactly right. <laughs> Witnessing. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I always uh, begin with two or three things mm -hmm. when I'm working with watercolor. One is from 6th century BC, mm -hmm. Heraclides, everything flows, everything changes. Mm -hmm. And watercolor lends itself to that so wonderfully. Mm -hmm. And it can, it can teach us each step. You can be open, and you don't. I've always loved not having to worry about mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's big. Great jazz. What was his name? 
Don't worry about mistakes. There are none. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, phew. <laughs> that's kind good. of uh, wabi sabi ish, right? Very wabi sabi. Yeah, that's <laughs> what that reminds me of. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not that you don't find Mine's things is, sorry. that are more that are more beautiful or satisfying mm -hmm. than others, but you don't have to be in mistake mode because mm -hmm. first day, first grade for me, mm -hmm. the silk had a mimeographed sheet of paper with words, boy, tree, house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we were to draw that in a square, the size. And because I was very strictly raised, I did just what they told me. But Billy <laughs> turned the page over. <laughs> Dog. <laughs> and I thought, wow. Yeah. But Miss Silk, you see Mary's a good girl. She oh. followed directions. Billy, really bad boy here. Mm -hmm. Something deep in me said, I'm going to do someday do something about that. Mm -hmm. wow. So my teaching really comes out of not just follow these exact directions or you're going to get shamed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. And, uh, That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Miss Silk. <laughs> <laughs> but what a um, spirit and, you know, what a. a awakened soul that you were, that you had that within you at Such that an early age. Yeah, yeah. It was. I didn't know it at the time, but yeah. it just opened up. Wow. So what you offer, we always call it your, like the inner critic, the inner dwarf. You know, when we're teaching, we try to, you know, foster it away. You know, it's okay, be with it, but it seems like you're, that's your gift um, in doing your art and also as a teacher. You say there is, there is no inner dwarf, <laughs> or there is one, but... Yeah. Yeah. But uh, open a space for something new. Yeah. And explore. An experiment. Wow. Very cool. So at your work, at your your paintings, your watercolors, do you feel like they're a portal? Do you, when you're done with them, do you reflect with, with them and have conversations? Yes. I do. And I, I learn from. Oh. That's new, or I think it has to do with how much ego is involved as mm. opposed to how much openness to something new. Mm. Mm -hmm. the, the control and the ego, yeah. we, we, we have an ego, and that has its important place, but it, uh, if it is in the total control, it's a very different experience and a very different result. Mm -hmm. right. Rather than coming from an open heart and an open explore, heart. explorative yeah. space. Yeah, exactly. I'm also wondering about, you seem to have like a very, um, almost like a meditative state in your real life. Like I recently met you, but I feel very like, um, a saddle energy. So I'm wondering about your uh, meditation practice, like uh, how it, within your life and within your day, how do you approach it? It seems like it for you. I feel like it's been like 24/7. If you know, you you seem to be kind of in that state. Uh, how did that happen? Was it like a practice you began and then it evolved into this? Well. Um, um, overjoyed that you experience it 24-7 mm -hmm. experience, but uh -huh. I do a traditional Vipassana meditation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I I learned much from shamanic mm. teachings this recent Russian Siberian teacher was here. Uh -huh. I was thinking how she teaches as you walk, kiss the earth, which is the same as the Eastern form of yes. just being aware, mm -hmm. being aware, just being present. Mm -hmm. There's something about kissing the earth. And 
extra little loving <laughs> connection as opposed to just aware. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I've loved that. That's new for me, but it really. And then to be, as you're kissing the earth, you're aware of, and kind of in communion with that which is around you. The bushes, the tree, the grass, whatever. But it's a very Eastern. It's, it's not, um, but I thought it seems such an overlay between in shamanic indigenous teachings and. Yeah, we, um, we just finished a book, but we discovered between reflections that. Um, uh, creativity and art is really your wild nature, if that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> What's the name of the book? <laughs> yes. The, the yogurt of uh, seven 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 yogurt of compassion, but through um, reflection, we really discovered how humans are so domesticated on and so many levels. We shouldn't be. <laughs> <laughs> we have to go back and find our wild. Yeah, roots. if you want to come and I mean, you were just talking about, but elaborate on that concept of wildness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And nature's wild. Yes. yes. <laughs> what is that? I've forgotten the poet that said, "In, pre in preservation is no, in in nature is the preservation of the world." Mm. But there is something so, you're right, about being domesticated for us to find openings to get reconnected. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So do you find when you're teaching, do you kind of guide people in that? Yes, well I like to, I've just developed this over the last few years when I do watercolor classes here, of um, working with the four elements. Mm -hmm. Air. Mm -hmm. So when you're working with water, mm -hmm. all the possibilities for water, or with air, or mm -hmm. fire, or mm -hmm. earth, okay. yeah. and find ways to connect to those. Mm -hmm. So we're not just looking at something and painting it because yeah. we like it, and that's. Mm -hmm. um, we're just playing, just doing experiments and being playful mm -hmm. with the watercolor too. I guide them in ways to begin to explore, but um, if you have those four elements, you can combine them. Mm -hmm. Pretty powerful. Yeah. Tapping into the larger forces. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, you say that art is healing? Yes. Healing. I think it's beauty in whatever ways we connect to it is an essential part of our deepest identity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you tap into the beauty or the core, yeah, the essence, yeah. is that when that transformation occurs? Or? I think so. It does for me. I, and maybe on some level, healing is like peeling away things that are not essentially us. And that's finding that core that you were right. just experiencing. When um, people collect your work, do they have what do they do they have breakthroughs or how? What's the relationship of um, people that love your work and buy it? Do they have breakthroughs? Does it have meaning or? Well, I hope so, but I don't know that I uh, can be very expansive on. that they would have what I have when I 
and with someone's art that it, I feel free. It frees me mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. I feel expanded. Mm -hmm. But I, I haven't asked people. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to tell. It's a, it's a very intimate, personal relationship with any piece of artwork. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I think it's more like I, I'm also mm -hmm. wondering like uh, it's you know Eric which we can't have today because he's not feeling very well but uh, it seems like a, a, the relationship uh, nourished and um, um, is he more bringing in the uh, com communal side of it or were you also like um, for me, it feels like you're more like a personal, intimate, but he he he, he's, he he feels like he's bringing more the communal side, and there's some kind of a balance. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship and this larger vision of the right foundation and the land we're at? Um, it's been quite a communal uh -huh. vision. Uh -huh. Eric is part of it. Uh -huh. Anna, who is his uh -huh. associate. Mm -hmm. Associate. Uh -huh. And you've spoken with her and her husband Kevin and mm -hmm. um, it's a big team. Others mm -hmm. um, formed this mm -hmm. back fifteen years ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, But it seems like it's I'm very, organic. I'm much more, in some ways, social than Eric. I love mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And Eric loves the idea of people, and he enjoys them when they're there, but he would not initiate people mm -hmm. wow. with as much ease as I do. Mm -hmm. And um, so it takes... It's all kinds yeah. wow. to, uh, yeah. to create, to manifest yeah. this. <laughs> but it, it seems like very organic, like over the years this was already happening and, you know, right foundation with ease and grace, you know, that was already on some so many levels were happening along the way. And it's it feels like it's a lot to do with your um, deep bonding with Eric. I, um, think, it, I think it does. Mm -hmm. People are drawn to it who are open to you know, so that it is community. I mean, mm -hmm. So look, groups and groups and groups. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. The fact that we do Native American uh, sweat lodges and ceremonies on the land mm -hmm. brings a group of people that wouldn't be here for otherwise. Mm -hmm. And then there's you know there's many different groups that you're tapping. That's very cool. No. What a beautiful life and uh, service. <laughs> I'm so grateful because I I grew up in the 30s for all kinds of reasons. There weren't a lot of people coming into mm. our family life. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you made it happen in this lifetime. <laughs> I would belong to many things as a young adult, but until we moved here, there wasn't space. You know, we, was, uh -huh. we lived in a tiny little place in Topanga. Mm -hmm. There wasn't room for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but here, there's space. Yeah. There's space. It's very spacious. <laughs> there is. And uh, it's such a gift for me because I'm so known for, for that for so mm. long. It's for one thing that I'm putting on, it seems like you're a really strong manifester. <laughs> like when you were in first grade, you said, I want that, do you know what I mean? I want that freedom of creation. And then somewhere along your path, you said, I want community. If um, you were to give somebody wisdom, what would you share them 
about the art of life. Basically, that's what you're doing. Our life is art, art of life. Mm -hmm. I think I would encourage everyone to know that they have deep within them infinite fan of possibilities and finding your path mm -hmm. to open that up mm -hmm. because that's going to be your path right. and to value that rather than you've got to follow this and follow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but to find what's deep within you and it can be very overlapping and similar to many others, but it doesn't have to be imitating them. This way or that way. The direction comes from within. So deep and profound on so many levels. I mean, this inner sh journey. <laughs> That's what it is, isn't it? It is. Uh, who was there? I think his name is Robertson. He's a psychologist, but he was talking about, um, he was big in the 80s, talking about the necessity for inner work. And then in Western society, we don't value inner work. And in Eastern society, there's very much values. So that, for me, it seems like that Eastern experience, that direct experience, really affected your whole life experience. Yes, I think it did. Thank you. Final words on the. Um, you mentioned that you really want to bring the uh, uh, inner youth here, but anything that you want to, uh, uh, any other projects that you want to uh, offer from this land and. Well, something I've been very slow with. Mm -hmm is community gardening, doing organic gardening. Oh. We did it in the past, mm -hmm. and then the critters got in and on the road, <laughs> lots of reasons. But we, uh, I would like that to be part of the activity on the land. Mm. Yeah, gardening is so Growing healing. And that the nourishment that comes, you know, knowing where it's coming from, it's huge. And the times are. <laughs> I think we have to do it. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, it is one of the great messages of from the wisdom yeah. keepers of our times is that's one of them. Mm -hmm. the gardening, sacred gardening, sacred gardening, being able to sustain oneself and. Outreach to others, it's not so easy up here, mm -hmm. but it's still possible. It yeah. is. It is. Wonderful. To conclude, we ask this to all our people, all our guests. As an artist, what is the significance of doing transformative art in these times, in the sensory, in the now? You were speaking about the sacred guardian, and I think that this is part of it as well. Yes. Again, it's basically connection, hmm. connection to Mother Earth, to, mm -hmm. to nature, community, mm -hmm. and building a connective world. There's much that disconnects us. Mm -hmm. And so it's moving out with the energy, connecting and building not just one's own expression of it, but communally too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The collaboration. Collaboration. Thank
Joe about. Wow, thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> really inspiring. Really inspiring. It's been an honor. honor. Longing when the time is right to hear more about what you do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, and uh, it was inspiring. And uh, if people want to come to one of your events, um, is there a website or yes, anything? Yeah. Mm -hmm. all, I can, there's a big pile of them up there. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. But we'll give you, it tells all the events for the year and mm -hmm. all the contact information. Super. And it's the right foundation? That's called Right or Way Organic Resource Center, which is work, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I think the website is rightfoundation.com. It's right here, uh, on here, but uh, perfect. The reason I have to look here because we did have a different name. It was uh, Right Way uh, for a while, and so that got shoved aside. And now it's Work. <laughs> <laughs> work, work, work. So uh, we're really excited about um, Beasley Ham Hamilton's coming here on um, close friends. February twelfth, and we're going to do a. a, a Ceremony, a ritual, and make art together. So we yeah. can't wait to do right. that. It's an open invitation art. from here. We yes. can think what feels good doing art in here. Yes. Or on the deck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's shadier there, but yeah. you know, if you yeah. if you need shade, it's yeah. shadier. Yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. what you can be thinking yeah. about. Thank you so much. Oh, Lovely. It's such, such a pleasure. Lovely. To know you and to know. Tell me about.